sent down on the, the, the people of Moses, right? And he sent down manna wa salwa. The wow would be harfa'at then. And then because... Which, ayah, which, because ayah you refer, which is it? 61 you said? Man, yeah, manna wa salwa. Okay. Allah says... Uh, <clears throat> um... قال أتستبدلون الذي وأدنى بالذي وخير؟ المن وسلوى is not mentioned in this ayah. It's mentioned in an ayah that preceded this. Give me one second. وأنزلنا عليكم المن وسلوى. كلوا كلوا من طيبات الله. It says here. وظللنا عليكم الغمامة. This ayah. This is ayah number fifty-seven. وظللنا عليكم الغمامة. Excuse me. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى So let's do i'rab of this, uh, this part of the ayah. Waw is harf al-af. Waw is harf al-af. Af. Atfu jumlatina ala jumla, ala ma sabaqa. Thumma ba'athnakum min ba'di mawtikum la'allakum tashkurun is a thought, it's a sentence. Uh, Allah is joining this sentence that come after ظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَةِ to the sentence that preceded it. So we say حَرْفُ الْعَطْفِ عَطْفُ جُمْلَتِنَا عَلَى جُمْلَةِ You follow that? That we join one sentence or sentence. So this is this حَرْفُ الْعَطْفِ here. So now the first sentence is ظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَةِ We say ظَلَّلْنَا فِعَلٌ مَاضٍ مَبْلِيُنَا عَلَى السُّكُونِ ظَلَّلْنَا from ظَلَّلَ which means a shade. ظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ We shaded upon you. But in English, we wouldn't use the upon ala because we don't need that uh, preposition to make the verb transitive. We make the verb transitive uh, without the preposition. In fact, we would, in, we, would, we would use a different preposition in front of the clouds. But let me explain this in Arabic first. We shaded upon you, literally, the clouds. Uh, the way we would translate it for a more... Uh, based on the meaning we shaded you with the cloud so we wouldn't use the preposition in front of you rather we use it in front of the clouds we shaded you with the clouds uh, here it means we shaded the clouds upon you uh, we placed the clouds that shade above you uh, so that's a sentence so this is uh, same thing here this wow here wa anzalna wow we will say harfa atfin أنزلنا عليكم المن والسلوى is جملة جملة فعلية وذس والواو عطف جملتنا على ما سبق أي على جملة سابقة so this is joining a verbal sentence to a verbal sentence we did this and we did this the first thing that Allah did is shared you Allah is addressing the Jews here the followers of Musa عليه السلام with the clouds um, and wa anzalna alaykum alman wa salwa. We send down upon you alman wa salwa. Alman literally means anything that you harvest without any effort. So you don't have to. So if we if we want to harvest most crops, you're going to plant them. You want corn, you got to till the soil. You got to plant the corn. You got to water it. You got to harvest it. Uh, man is not that. Man is something that you harvest without having to make any effort. It grows naturally. Huh? So what, what the word literally mean? Favor. It means a favor. Uh, but the Prophet ﷺ explained that what is implied by that is anything that you harvest without having to cultivate. Huh? Or anything you collect without having to cultivate. So any crop that grows naturally uh, that you harvest without cultivating is called al-man. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, al-kam'atu min al-manni wa ma'uha shifa'u lil'ayn. That al-kam'a, kam'a is kind of, a kind of truffle uh, that grows in dry desert place. There's no planting. You just don't plant it. It just grows. <laughs> it grows in the arid deserts, in dry land. And uh, it grows when the thunder, uh, when there's a lot of lightning and thunder. Hence, the Arabs call it Banat al-Ra'di. Very interesting concept. They call it Banat al-Ra'di, the daughters of the thunder. 
yeah, al kama. It's a kind of truffle. It's it's part it's part of the man. But anyway, some of them say it's kind of as a honey that they harvested from tree that's called al man. And as salwa, uh, wow here is harfa atfin, and as salwa is maatufa alay. As salwa is a kind of bird uh, that they would uh, they would get. So honey and the flesh of birds. So Allah is saying, "Wa anzalna alaykum al-manna wa salwa." We send down upon you, or to you, or for you, al-man and al-salwa. So here we say, "Wow, harf atf, atf jumlatin ala jumla, atf anzalna alaykum al-manna wa salwa, ala zallalna alaykum al-ghamam." But this wow here is atf kalimatin ala kalima. So the way we do a rab of salwa is we would say. وأنزلنا فعل ماض مبني على السكون عليكم جار ومجرور متعلقان بأنزلنا أن عليكم وسيتك نسمى مبني على السكون حروف الجار مبنية all of it why is there a ضمة here this meme actually has a سكون but then the سكون of the meme meets the سكون of the lamb and therefore حركنا الميمة حركنا الميمة ساكنة في why did we make it a dhamma to match the dhamma and the calf before? So we say, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُ مُلْمَنَّ So this meme, this dhamma and the meme, we call it dhammatun a'ridha. It's not dhammatul i'rab or bina. It's not a dhamma of i'rab. It's not a dhamma of bina. It's a dhamma of qira'a. Anyway, Al-manna, we say, maf'oolun bihi mansubun wa alamatu al-nasb al-fathatu ala akhiri. So, al-man is maf'oolun bihi for anzalna. It's the object for the verb anzalna. It's the thing that Allah sent down. And then we say, wow, harf al-aqf, check this out now. Wa salwa is ma'atufun ala al-man. Check this out. And it is fi mahal al-nasb. I didn't say it's mansub. Al-man, I say it's mansub. But as salwa, we say it's fi mahal in nasb. Why? Because of this alif maqsura, all words that end with alif maqsura are in a state of nasb. They're never mansu because it's mabni. Mabni yuna ala sukun. You follow that, Ani? So we say as salwa is mabni yuna ala sukun fi mahal in nasb, fi ma'atufun ala al man. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's a lot of details there, but hey, you guys are going to pick it up as you go along. I know it's a lot, uh, but I don't mind saying it because number one, we're recording it, we'll, we'll post it out there, and inshallah, you'll pick it up as you go along. Al Sifatu al Mawsuf. Al Sifatu wal Mawsuf. So we say, الصفة تتبع الموصوفة في أربعة. The noun in Arabic precedes the adjective. Okay, that's just a statement I'm mentioning. That it's just a fact, fact for a person learning Arabic to know that first you state the noun and then the adjective. Ah, so it's kind of like instead of saying smart boy, you say boy smart. Ah, instead of saying new house, we say house new. Ah, instead of saying easy language, we say language easy. Which language am I referring to? Definitely I not Arabic. <laughs> definitely not actually, Arabic. Actually, I meant actually I meant Arabic. Arabic is easier than English in many ways. Uh, one of the ways, two ways. Number one, it is uh, easy to read because there's one way to pronounce things correctly. Uh, in English, we're never quite sure. You say a or a or e or u or hum or whatever. Uh, so English is difficult to pronounce. It's not consistent in its pronunciation. It's misspelled. <laughs> if you ask me, the first guy that spelled it didn't know what he was doing. I think it was Benjamin Franklin, uh, uh, President Benjamin Franklin, Franklin, who was who had proposed that the English language be respelled, and he actually did it, but it was it didn't uh, it didn't take roots. <laughs> it's kind of like the um, the the what we call it metric system. Uh, that's one reason English is uh, Arabic is easier than English is reading. The second is uh, 
uh, it's uh, it's structured. Words are structured. When you form words in English, you use prefixes and suffixes, and you just string words together. Sometimes people use very strange words. It makes me laugh. I always joke. I say English language is going to die of suffixation. We'll choke it to death with all the suffixes. Uh, whereas Arabic is structured, we have patterns for words. And the grammatical rule in Arabic, the words themselves uh, are modified based on their grammatical position, whereas the words remain the same in English. So Arabic is a much more structured uh, design language than English is. From that perspective, it's easy. From the perspective that you're an English-speaking person who grew up not speaking Arabic, of course it looks difficult. And then, of course, it's much more detailed than English. But once you learn it, it's a precise language. Um, we say the adjective agrees with the noun in four things. The way we express this in Arabic, we say, asifatu, that's the adjective, tatba'ul mawsufa fi arba'a, that the adjective follows the noun that it describes in four things. These four things, I would list them and then I would give you examples for them. Uh, a ta'rif wa tankir, definiteness or indefiniteness. So if one is mu'arraf, the other must be mu'arraf. If one is nakira, the other one must be nakira. The number, uh, whether it's singular uh, or dual or plural. So if the noun is singular, the adjective must be singular. If the noun is dual, the adjective must be dual. And if the noun is plural, the adjective must be plural. Uh, and that's generally the case. There's a few slight exceptions. Gender in masculinity or uh, femininity. See that what I did with English there? Uh, if the noun is masculine, the adjective must be masculine. And if the noun is feminine, the adjective must be feminine. And here, feminine, we mean either lafzan or ma'nan. The word is feminine or the meaning itself is feminine. Then the sifa, the adjective must be feminine also. Excuse me. And that's generally the case, and there's a very few exceptions which we wouldn't study today. Al I'rab, the grammatical analysis. If the noun is marfu, the adjective must be marfu. If the noun is mansub, the adjective must be mansub. And if the noun is majrur, the adjective must be majrur, which is what we studied in the preceding lesson. So we already covered number four, but we would look at we would look at it when we analyze these examples. So I have here a bunch of examples, uh, five examples. Let's take them. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهَا So I don't want to do the analysis of the entire sentence. It's going to overwhelm you. Uh, suffice to say that رَجُلٌ is, we say, إِسْمٌ. And it's مَرْفُوعٌ because it's فَاعِلْ for قَالَ. It's the subject for the verb. Uh, uh, so rajulun is marfu'un the word mu'min uh, sorry it's a noun and the word mu'min is sifa rajulun mu'minun a believing man believing is describing the man the word rajul is uh, is let's fo let's follow according to the four it's indefinite rajulun so we have to say mu'minun. We cannot say rajulun al-mu'minu. Why? Because this is nakira. This has to be nakira. If the word rajulun was was uh, was mu'arraf, let's say ar-rajulu, if Allah had said that. Now he didn't, right? And of course I cannot modify the ayah. I'm just doing it here for uh, for grammatical, for less, a lesson in grammar. If the word was ar-rajulu, we would have to say Al mu'minu. See that? And of course, we would drop the ten mean also because of the alif and lam. But of course, Allah says, Rajulun. So we say, Mu'minun. This is Nakira. This is Nakira. The next one, the number. Rajulun is singular. So we say, Mu'minun. If Allah had said, Rajulani, wa qala Rajulani, we would have said, Mu'minani. Huh? وَقَالَ رَجُلَانِ مُؤْمِنَانِ But of course Allah said رَجُلٌ and He said مُؤْمِنٌ If He had said وَقَالَ رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ أَنْ تَطَعُوهُمْ 
فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ That is in Surah Al-Fat رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ So singular, singular. If it was dual, it would have been dual. If it was plural, it would have been plural. Gender. This is masculine, this is masculine. Allah says رَجُلٌ That's masculine, we say مُؤْمِنٌ If Allah had said وَقَالَتْ وَقَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ uh, we would have said mu'minatun wa qalat imra'atun mu'minatun so if if it was imra'a instead of rajul if it was feminine we would have said mu'minatun uh, but Allah said rajulun uh, uh, which is masculine uh, mudhakkar so therefore mu'minun is mudhakkar i'rab this is marfu'un uh, therefore this is marfu' Rajulun mu'minun. We don't say Rajulun mu'minan or Rajulun mu'minin. Rajulun mu'minun because of Sifatu Tadba'a al Mawsuf fil I'rab. So that's, this is the explanation of the I'rab of the word Rajulun uh, mu'minun. You all follow that? Yes, Sheikh. Okay, let's take the next example. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَيَحِيدٍ Of course, the way we read this is with idgham. We would put a shadda or a, imagine there's a shadda on the wow and merge the tanween into the wow. But that is a, uh, that is a gram, uh, excuse me, that is for tajweed. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَيَحِيدٍ and of course, we'll stop with sukun. But ta'amin wahidin. Let's do the i'rab of just these two words and ignore the rest of the sentence. Uh, we say ala harfu jarrin. We would just do this part. Ta'amin majroor. We harfu jarrin ala. Wahidin sifa li ta'am. Wa sifa tu tatba'u al mawsuf fil i'rab. Fa wahidin majroor also. Ta'amin wahidin. That's the fourth thing that it follows it. But let's go through the other four. Ta'amin is nakira. Uh, therefore, wahidin, the sifa would be nakira also. So we say ta'amin wahidin. We don't say ta'amin al wahidi. Or if Allah had said, He didn't say, but if He had said, ala ta'amil wahidi. If Allah had said, at ta'ami. We would have, had, of course, had to drop the tenween here. We would have had to say al wahidi, and of course, there would not be any shadda and the wow anymore because there is no reason for it wrong. We would say lan nasbira ala ta'amil wahidi, but of course, Allah didn't say that. He said ta'amin wahidin. If it was uh, the gender, it's masculine, it's masculine. Uh, how do we make it feminine? We'll probably have to make it plural uh, to make it feminine. If, if Allah had said, yeah, but then you can't use wahidin. So feminine is not going to work here. If Allah had said, instead of ta'am, so if it was a feminine word, you would have said wahidatin. And then ta'amin, you say wahidin because of ala, uh, and there's no way to make there's no way to make this mansub or majru uh, or marfu because of the word ala. But if it was marfu, if the word was ta'amun, it isn't because of ala. It has to be majrur, majrur, uh, ala. But if it was ta'amun, we would say wahidun. If it was ta'aman, we would have said wahidan. For example, هَذَا طَعَامٌ وَاحِدٌ That's a different sentence from the ayah. Or if I were to say, أَكَلْتُ طَعَامًا وَاحِدًا I ate a single food. The next example, هَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ This wow here, what is this wow? An A? Can you repeat the question, Chef? <laughs> uh, 
وهذا ال what is the wow call this is a a technical wow this wow here is wow al qasam it mean and I swear by this uh, this uh, uh, safe city but it technically it can be حرف العطف because it's عطف جملتنا على جملة and it inherits the قسم from the ayah that preceded it. The ayah says والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والأنثى. No, which surah is this? وهذا البلد الأمير. I can't even find the surah now. Give me one second. That's is that surah to the land? وهذا البلد الأمين. No. Where is it? Is that سورة الليل? Where is وهذا البلد الأمين؟ أعوذ بالله. <تصفيق> وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم. يا <تصفيق> سورة أعوذ بالله من الشيء سورة التين <laughs> وهذا البلد الأمين سورة التين so this wow here there's two ways to to do analysis of this wow we say والتين والزيتون والتين والزيتون this first wow is wow القصب is the wow to swear with والزيتون you can say is wow العطف that a zaytun is ma'atufun ala teen. You say the same for this wow here, waturi sinin, that this is wow al qasam, and you can, uh, excuse me, harf at, and you can say this is harf al at. And then we would say they inherit the qasam because they're ma'atufun ala al maqsuma alayhi. So a zaytun became uh, majurur because it's maqsuma alayhi because it's conjuncted, uh, conjoined. To a word that is maqsuma alayhi that we swear upon. Or you can say this wa is wa al qasam, this is wa al qasam, this is wa al qasam, and this is wa al qasam. So there's two analysis of the wa hadha al balad al amin. Let's come back to the example. Wa hadha al balad al amin. Al baladi is is al mushar ilay. هذا البل وهذا هذا البلد الأمين وهذا البلد would be بدل فهذا or actually is مشار إلي اسم الإشارة البلد is the noun الموصوف الأمين is the صفة so الأمين is an adjective that describes the city the safe city so let's analyze this in the four things we see that the word al-balad is mu'arraf, therefore the sifa is al-ameen. We do not say wa hadha al-baladi ameenin. We say al-baladi al-ameeni. So the sifa tatwa al mawsuf fi ta'rif. The number, balad is singular, therefore al-ameen is singular. Excuse me. The gender, this is masculine. And when we say masculine, we mean uh, based on the lofts, not the meaning. There's nothing about a city that is masculine. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Uh, therefore, the word al-amin is masculine. And the a'rab, this is majurur. And this is majurur. This here, we can say it's majurur uh, for two different reasons. Uh, so here we say we can say it's majurur because this is wawul qasam. What will qasam makes al maqsuma alayhi majurur? Or we can say ma'atufun ala ala teen. Therefore, al ma'atuf yatba'u al ma'atuf alayhi fi al i'rab. So there's two ways to do the analysis of this this kasra here. Na'arun hamia. This is surah al qari'ah. Na'arun is a ism. Hamia to the sifa. Which means hot or burning. Narun, fire, burning fire, hot fire, blazing fire. Narun, check this out. It's it's nakira. Narun, so we say hamia tun. If it was an naru, we would say an naru al hamia tu. 
in number it's singular narun is singular singular therefore we say hamiyatun singular and uh, this is uh, this is strange but you'll learn this the word narun is feminine <laughs> the word narun is feminine how we know it's feminine it's just the design of the language that fire is feminine and i don't want to comment more on that so therefore because the word narun is feminine we say hamiyatun hamiyatun how do we know the word narun is feminine because allah said hamiyatun that's evident because had it been narun was ma was masculine we would said hamiyun or hamin actually the ya yeah would have been dropped and the ta is not needed uh, al i'rab this is marfu and this is more for walaqad anzalna ilayka ayatin bayyinatin so let's do a rob of that ayatin is maf'ul bihi for the word anzalna anzalna ayatin we send down ayat ayat is a strange word it's what we call jama'u al mu'annath al salim it's the it's the song feminine plural Ayatun, ayatun. Mu'minatun, mu'minatun. When it's mansub, it becomes mansub with kasra. Huh? When jamu al mu'annath al salim is mansub, it becomes mansub with kasra. Normally, you have to say mansub with fatha. We would have said ayatan. Huh? This is the pattern it would have been on. But because it's jamu al mu'annath al salim, it becomes mansub with كسرة. So we say أنزلنا فعل ماض مبني على سكون آيات إليك جار مجرور متعلق قدم أنزلنا آيات مفعول به check this out منصوب وعلامة النص الكسرة على آخره لأنه جمع المؤنث السالم because it's the song feminine plural uh, so it's indefinite آيات Therefore, bayyinatin. If Allah had said, wa anzalna ilaykal ayati, al ayati, we would have said, excuse me, we would have said, al bayyinati. We would have said, excuse me, al bayyinati. But of course, Allah didn't say al ayati, He said ayatin. So we say bayyinatin is the adjective. Oh, ayat means signs, by uniting is a description of it, uh, clear signs or, or clear evidences or clear verses. Number, ayat is plural, so by yinat is plural also. Uh, gender, ayat is feminine, so by yinatin is feminine. I'rab ayat is majru, uh, excuse me, is mansub. <laughs> by yinatin is also mansub. Huh? Ayatin. Is mansub, but the sign of nas is kasra, and you would learn that in um, in jamal al muannaf al salim. So those are the examples. Uh, just give you another example that we did uh, early on. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. In fact, if I were to just be kind of lazy and just grab it from here, copy this. And we'll analyze the entire uh, thing here again in the four uh, things that it follows in. So we say, "Ihdina sirata." As sirata is maf'ul bih al-thani, mansub wa alamat al-nas al-fathatu ala akhirihi al-mustaqim sifat al-sirata wa sifat tatbaa al-mansub fi arba'a. The first is it's definite. As sirata has alif and lam, so we say al-mustaqima. The straight, the path. That's how we say it. Or the path, the straight. The path, the straight. Or upright. The path, the upright. As-sirata al-mustaqimah. You have to put alif and lam. The number, as-sirata is singular. Singular. Therefore, al-mustaqim is, is singular. Gender. As-sirata is masculine. Therefore, al-mustaqimah is masculine. As-sirata is mansub. Therefore, al-mustaqimah is mansub. So therefore, these are examples of the sifa.
following the mausuf in four things. Let me summarize that quickly. Asifatu, uh, we will always mention the noun and then the adjective in Arabic. The opposite of what we do in English, we mention the adjective and then the noun that it describes. And the adjective agrees with the nouns in four things. The noun that it describes in four things, not the definiteness or indefiniteness, the number, whether it's singular, dual, or plural, the gender, whether it's masculine or feminine, and the arab, the grammatical analysis. And then we have these examples. Is that clear? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. If that is clear and if you have no questions, I think I'll pause here, inshallah. Any questions, Ani? Sheikh, I was... Uh... What were you? Hello? Sorry, I was just paying attention because I was driving through the mountains and no I was problem. losing uh, connection. So That's I just fine. wanted to... Um, so just, when, you, just when you get out to the mountains and you get in flat land, <laughs> You can go on <laughs> YouTube and check no, it out. I just out. wanted to find out if this is being recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's I being recorded. Um, okay, so, perfect. That's fine. So I'll stop the recording and I'll upload it to YouTube and you can follow it from there, inshallah. Okay, sure. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu ala ilayin, astaghfirullah, wa ilayin.